Well, hi all, um, welcome, welcome to this broadcast. Um, we're going to give about three minutes for everyone to join. Um, so yeah, we're just going to wait uh, for about three minutes now. Hi to the new people joining. Um, we are waiting for about three minutes um, to give people time to join. Um, just another two minutes now. Well, okay, I think we are going to be starting now. So, uh, hi again. Um, welcome to everyone to this uh, webinar. Uh, my name is Felix perez Cicala, and I'm a photovoltaics engineer and software developer at Rated Power. Um, in this webinar, we're going to, take, to tell you about the product updates, um, the releases uh, we did to PV Design in the first quarter of 2022. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be uh, more of an informal uh, let's say, explanation on the updates, updates we did, um, but a bit more in-depth than what we usually publish. Um, we do have a web page in our knowledge base. Um, here in the knowledge base, you can see the latest updates. Um, here we publish um, all of the update, updates we push to the software um, with a monthly cadence. Um, you can read about the new features, and you have videos and stuff, but this is going to be more in-depth than, than that. So, right, and also if you have any questions, um, please um, write them in the chat and we will answer them, uh, we will answer them by the end of the webinar. Um, I expect the presentation to last for about 20 minutes and then there will be another 20 minutes for questions. So, um, well, without further ado, um, I will start with the updates um, released in January. The first of which is the possibility to um, choose German as the language for the interface. Um, so this is important, this is just for the interface. The documents um, have not yet been released in German, but you can switch the interface language to German, it's really easy. Um, all you have to do is um, in your, uh, once you are logged in, you go to your user preferences, here in preferences, and um, you switch to um, German, which is here. And as you can see, now the, the interface and all the text is in German, including um, all the explanations. So for example, uh, you can see here all the details and the descriptions are in German, which is uh, much easier to understand for people in Germany you know, in, <laughs> who speak German, of course. Um, right, so uh, let's see. The next update was uh, we released some improvements to the comparison page. Uh, this is a very important feature to us. Um, it's extremely useful to make quick comparisons between different designs and different options. Um, we feel like this really synergizes well with the purpose of PV design, uh, which is to, to allow you to optimize your, your PV plan designs and to find the, the best options, right? And to optimize economical aspects and engineering aspects and the energy production and, and all of that. And the improvements we made 
relate to the new possibilities which you can compare. So let's see, if I choose, let's say, these three designs to compare, okay, and I click here the comparison, um, if you click filters here, you will see all the different values that you can choose for the comparison. So we can select, for example, the power of the PE module, um, which is now down here, and the type of the PE module, as you can see, as I go, as I add them, they show below, right? And so we added a, a bunch of team, uh, new options here. For example, the structure configuration, which is this one here, and the structure name. Um, also, the available area and installed area, which are these ones here. And we also added the possibility to sort by one of these values. So, for example, we can sort by LCOE in order to find the design with the best LCOE value, in this case, the cheapest, or we can find the design with the most production very easily as well. As you can see, the, also the design with the highest value is highlighted. So this is, just makes it really easy to find the, the option, right? So yeah, just um, if you haven't tried this feature yet, please do. And also uh, another feature was that now the values you choose here, the options you choose here will be saved for your next session. So this really um, makes your life easier. Right. Um, the next um, improvement was that now the um, in the substation documents, so in the interconnection facility documents, sorry, um, when you choose the IEEE um, standard, the symbols will be the IEEE symbols. So let me show you how that works. Um, this matters for our users in the in, in the United States. So in this design here, um, when you launch the design, you need to go to the grid point tab and switch to the IEEE electrical standard, as you can see here. And once you do that, you will get um, the, so this is the substation SLD, the interconnection facility single line diagram. And as you can see, the transformer has the IEEE symbol and the rest of the elements do as well. Um, this was really important because otherwise the documents weren't usable um, in the US. Um, I mean, they weren't accepted. So this actually makes a lot of sense, sense for them. Um, right. The next update in January was that we made some performance improvements in the layout tab. So by performance, uh, we mean that we made the web page faster, pretty much. And you may notice um, that uh, for a while now, when you go to the layout tab, um, things load quicker than before. And also, it's, um, it's very responsive when you switch tabs. So if I go to electrical and back to the layout, or equipment and back to layout, it's really quick now. Um, so yeah, that was um, some. Those were some improvements we made in January to this particular tab. Then um, the final improvement in January was that we released a new electrical shading loss calculation model. Um, so essentially, the old um, calculation model we had was really conservative, and this was affecting the fixed uh, structures the most, of course. Um, with backtracking, we do not have a beam shading, so this doesn't have an effect in trackers. But for fixed structures, um, we were seeing a situation where once you had a very restrictive configuration with like a very close pitch and a lot of tilt, um, the loss was overestimating the real loss that you would see um, in reality. Um, the new formula, you can find it in the energy methodology report in section 7.222. We have a very detailed explanation here. But the idea is that uh, the first the first term here represents um, the loss that well represents the idea that you lose the beam the, the production due to the beam irradiance, but not the production due to the diffuse and ground reflected irradiance. So as you can see, this is the beam and this is the global, and the coefficient uh, represents that. And then the this new part here. And what this does is that it takes into account that we have already subtracted a loss with the linear shading factor, um, which after the um, after that loss has been subtracted, it doesn't need to be subtracted again. And so we are only removing um, the part due to the, the the part that hasn't been removed yet due to the string electrical shading. Okay. And the value of the loss, you can find it in the energy report under photovoltaic module losses shading mismatch. So it's this value here. This is the value which is calculated using the, the new calculation model. 
And like I said, in tracker seeds will be zero, and you will only find this in um, fixed structures. Right, so the ne next time, um, finally, the copy paste feature in the CapEx page. Um, so this was a, another quality of life improvement where um, we made it possible for you to take um, values in Excel. So for example, let's say here that I have this template, right, and I am um, modifying the values. Well, you can copy um, a column of values and paste it, uh, let's see here, and paste it in the costs or in the CapEx template tab really quickly like that. And so what this does is that it makes your life easier to um, take values from Excel into PD design um, and then uh, run a simulation. These none values, I mean, they, they show because um, this Excel file has a gap here. So if I was just to remove the gap like this, I can then copy this column and paste it here. And now it's fine, as you can see. So, right, next update was uh, moving to February. We changed the terrain surface generator. So the thing is, PV Design has a terrain interpolator, which is used to generate a digital elevation model. Um, we generate this digital elevation model um, using data from Google Maps or um, using custom uh, data uploaded by the user. Um, this inter the interpolator we replaced is the interpolator for Google Maps, right? So the improvement um, is that we changed the calculation model to use a radial basis function. This is a completely different kind of interpolation than, to, than what we were using before. And well, the best way to show it is just by looking at layout 3D, like the layout 3D and what the terrain looks like. Looks like. Um, the one on the left is the terrain as it was before. Um, I, I have to stress that this, is, this isn't how it always looks. This is a particularly bad example. But generally speaking, when you have um, very complicated terrain or very sparse resolution in the data set, you will get this kind of peaks that you can see all over the place. So you can probably see them now, where we have these um, little peaks here, which were um, obviously affecting the solution um, and distorting the, the results, right? Um, one example of the distortion was that um, you can see that here we have this area where we have a situation where one row is installed and the next one isn't. Um, I mean, it's, it's installed, it's installed, it's installed, it's installed. We used to call this banding, and it's precisely because of these little peaks and troughs that appear in the terrain. With the new surface generator, you can see that the surface is perfectly smooth in the entirety of the PV plant, right? Um, for example, looking at this same, um, sorry, the same view from before, you can see that it's um, perfectly smooth, this mountain and everything. And also that um, the, as you can see here in this same area, you don't see as many structures which are just like, you know, installed um, alone in some region. So it makes it, the, the solution is more coherent with the terrain, let's say. Uh, so you can see that this has a huge impact in the final solution when using, um, obviously, I mean, this is uh, the case when you use um, topography filters. So by that, I mean, when you go to the layout tab and you enable these filters here, um, this only has an effect if you do that. I mean, if you are not using topography filters, um, the terrain is going to look worse, but it's not going to have an effect in your peak capacity, for example. Okay. Um, right. The next update um, was the multi-factor authentication. So this was a cybersecurity update to the software where you can now enable MFA for your account. The way to do that, it's really simple. Um, you go to the preferences, preferences tab, the same place where we switch languages earlier, and you enable in, under security, you set up multi-factor authentication here. Um, once you enable it, I'm not going to do it for this account, but once you do that, um, you just follow the instructions. You have to use an app on your phone, and it works really well. So yeah, moving on, uh, finally, March. Um, we haven't released the latest updates um, post for March yet, but I expect it's going to be out tomorrow or the day after. But these were the updates. Um, the first update was a new cable routing algorithm. So we completely remade um, the cable routing algorithm of PV Design. 
um, in order to fix um, some unwanted behaviors we were seeing in both the medium voltage system and the low voltage system. So I'm now going to switch to AutoCAD again. Uh, let's see, I need to close these tabs. And I'm going to open two layouts. Let's see, these two. And I will show you directly what I mean. So I'm going to put them side by side. Right, so the, the update changed the behavior of the algorithm mostly when the geometry was very complicated um, for low voltage, but also with um, topography restrictions. So right now, let me put this on the left so that it makes sense like it was before. So we have the old algorithm on the left and the new algorithm on the right. And maybe you can already see something wrong, but I'm going to highlight the issue. Um, I'm just going to only show the medium voltage system in both um, designs, like so, okay. So now you can see, um, these are the cables for the medium voltage system. And as you can see, we have some very long cables here where the algorithm didn't find the correct route to go from this part of the P plant to the delivery point. And well, I mean, it's obvious that it's obvious that, it's obvious that this doesn't happen here. Um, we also see that the new algorithm always follows the roads as much as possible. I mean, um, you can see that all of the cables are following the layout of the roads, which I can show you real quick. Here and here. Um, so yeah, as you can see, we try to minimize the number of times the medium voltage cables have to cross from one, um, let's say, road to another. Um, which was an issue because they were crossing below the structure sometimes. So by reducing the number of crosses, um, this is an optimization to the, which makes the plant easier to build, right? And finally, um, to show you, I don't know if it's going to be easily visible, but maybe we can try. I want to show you the low voltage system and in both designs because it should be different. Um, we will see if we actually can see the difference or not. Right. So, yeah, you can see what I'm showing you here are the string cables. So the cables are um, four square millimeters and 10 square millimeters in some cases. And as you can see, while the designs look more or less similar on the surface, we had some cables which were, again, doing really weird things around structures. Um, also, we had some errors here. And as you can see, the new algorithm doesn't have any of that. So this is obviously a great improvement where the cable lengths are going to be much better. The sections aren't going to be affected. And well, just as a quick explanation for what was going on, the issue before was that when the layout was very complicated, or in this particular case, when the layout had topography restrictions, the cables couldn't find a way around all of these holes in the layout. It's like the routing was incorrect, and whenever there were this many holes, things broke. Right, so this was a huge release for us, um, and we are very happy that it made it to production. Um, we had an initial release um, in February, but we had to roll it back because uh, we observed, an, well, it was an abnormally high error rate. But after that, we fixed the issues and we released the feature again. Uh, now it's uh, pretty much perfectly stable and we are not seeing um, any kind of error rate with this new release. So we are very happy with that. Um, finally, right, the last two updates. Um, it is now possible to manually define the trajectory for the medium voltage cables connecting one area to another. Um, in the past, the design would just um, go straight from the access point to the substation. So if I show you that in Google Earth, previously what PV Sign would do is it just would go from the AC connection point to the substation directly, just a straight line, right? But now it's possible to manually define a path going from the area to the substation. So this allows you to um, better control the length of the cables and also to follow um, terrain features which PV sign doesn't know about, right? Like, for example, here we may have a situation where, I don't know, perhaps you can't cross uh, this way because there is a river, 
So in order to go around that, you need to manually do that, but PB design doesn't have that, that information, right? So now you can manually define the path so that um, the cable will follow that and the length will be more accurate. Um, to do that, you need to create a folder called MB cable. I don't know if it's visible on your screen because it's really small on mine, but um, you need to define a folder called MB cable and then you create paths inside this folder. Um, which connect one area to the substation. As you can see here, I have two available areas, one on the right and another on the left, and I have two paths connecting uh, each of them to the substation. Um, finally, once you upload that to PV Design, let's see, um, I think this was in Australia, right? Yeah. Here in this layout, you can see that we have a medium voltage cable going from, well, I mean, following the path I defined, right? And so this is reflected in the bill of quantities and the SLD documents and all of that. Um, also, yeah, very important, we have a knowledge-based tutorial explaining all the caveats of this and um, some hints, and especially you have here the explanations of what you need to do in Google Earth. And yeah, the final feature for March was that it is now possible to upload KMLs with overlapping restricted areas. So in the past, if you were to upload a KML with this kind of definition in PV design, it would fail. Um, so let me show you, right. So these are two restricted areas. Um, if you were to upload this in PV design, it would fail in the past. But now it's allowed, and so you can upload this KML just as is. And um, then if you go to the site, you will see that the areas are just represented fine and the simulation runs just fine. So this was an, another quality of life improvement. Um, people doing very complicated sites, people importing sites from other softwares like under some optimization comes to mind. Um, this was an issue because um, it's not uh, prohibited in, in those other options and so this was um, very cumbersome to fix. So this improvement just makes life easier for, for everyone, really. Um, okay, so, well, that's it for the presentation. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something um, about these updates and about the design. And, right, um, if you have any questions, um, please drop them in the chat and I will answer them as they default. So, let's see. Um, Right, I see, yeah, I see a question by Chris, which says, it would be nice to make it as easy to change language units as a currency symbol, like for the UK um, sterling settings. Maybe you can explain this process or say if it be made easy soon. Um, right, that's an interesting suggestion. Um, Chris, thank you so much. Um, we're going to take note and pass it on to our product managers. Um, Right, um, the, in order, like the explanation you were asking about, um, there are, well, there are, like, changing the units in PV design, you have to do that, you can do that in different places. So the first place that comes to mind is in the preferences. You can change here the unit system um, for the interface. So if I change the unit system from international to imperial, what you will see is that in start design, now the area is in acres, for example, and the, well, the length your units are in feet, so the pitch is in, is in feet, right? But this doesn't necessarily affect the documents. In order to change the units in the documents, you need also to check that when you generate the design, the unit system is imperial. And this will actually make uh, the documents be in imperial units as well, okay? But you can, you can have the interface in one unit system and the documents in another, that's fine. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting suggestion. We'll take it into account. Thank you so much. Um, then what else do we have? Um, right. Um, there is a question which says, the smooth end topography you showed before is using the Google Earth one, or is it only... Okay, yeah, correct. Um, it's using the Google Earth topography. So um, this one. Okay. When you upload the custom topography, it is still using the old interpolator. Um, the inverse distance weighting interpolator. Um, the reason for that is that the new interpolation using real basis functions, um, it doesn't, um, 
it doesn't handle well when you have the contour lines. So when you upload a topography file which came from contour lines and the contour lines are really, really close and the elevation difference is um, very high, it can, it's really unstable, really. And so we decided not to enable it for now because it could give um, errors and just stop the simulation if it failed. So for the time being, we are still using the old interpolator, which is much more robust. I mean, even though it gives um, this kind of wrong results in some simulations, it's much more robust. And also, if you upload a very high resolution file, the old interpolator is just fine. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. When you have 0 0.75 meters or even 3 meters, um, the result is pretty much the same. Okay. Um, right. Um, Jose asks, um, Jose Miguel asks, um, let's say I'm going to try to tra translate this to English. Um, how do you set the number of strings per inverter? Um, sometimes it, um, yeah, it, uh, it will, um, let's say, it will use more strings than the inverter has inputs. So that's an issue, right? Um, you need to, so the, the things that you can't do that, um, like directly saying, I want my inverter to have this many strings. But let's say if I switch to a string inverter and then I go to electrical, right? You can adjust the DCAC ratio um, to match what you are expecting. So if I have 10 strings, I would have to calculate um, with my module power. Um, and with the number of uh, here, the number of modules per string, I will have to manually adjust the DCAC ratio so that it doesn't exceed um, the number of strings per inverter that I want. Okay, so that uh, it's a bit manual, but also um, it's re relatively easy to check the results. Once you run the simulation, you can download the low voltage single line diagrams. And uh, let's see, you can see here the number of strings per inverter. So if this value was wrong, you can then go back to PDesign and lower the number of, uh, lower the DCAC ratio in order to reduce the number of strings per inverter. Um, okay, so Roberto asks um, if, well, thank you, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, um, if the can the MV paths overlap? As I understood, each MV path is for one AA. Can you confirm? Right. Um, I think so. You, I think the path can, the paths can overlap each other. So you can have a situation where, like, um, let's see, um, this path can do like. Well, sorry, let's try to actually click the correct point. I don't know if this is what you're asking, but I think you can do this. I think this is fine. Um, the, what I think, I mean, well, I'm not going to go in, in depth. Um, most of the explanations are here. Um, I recommend you read this article in the knowledge base. It's called How to Create a Custom MV Route on a Site. Um, maybe, Emilio, could you please um, share this link in the chat? Or, well, maybe I'm going to do it myself. Just let's see. Well, there we go. Um, so I recommend you read that. And if you have any questions other than this, uh, well, this is for you and for everyone else. Um, please drop us an email at support at ratedpower.com. Um, then our support team will be able to answer you directly. Okay. Um, well, and finally, will uh, will be new webinars for new users in the future? Um, I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, if you can, exp uh, is this a request for more webinars? Um, if so, could you please um, um, rephrase the question a bit? Um, right now, I think we are going, to, we are recording the webinar. Um, I don't know for sure if it's going to be available later. Um, right. Um, Thomas asks another question. The shading improvement is only calculated for fixed structure or tracker two. All right. Um, so and is it available now? So the shading, the electrical shading improvement is available now. Um, and it is calculated for trackers as well, um, as, as well as for fixed structures. The difference is that with trackers, um, PV Design uses backtracking by default. And with backtracking, um, there are no um, direct, uh, there are no beam uh, shades in between the structures. There are no direct shades between the structures. And what that means is that, um, well, the, because there are no shades in between the structures, there is, uh, there is no electrical shading effect. 
the shading that is calculated for trackers is diffuse shading. And obviously, if you have bifacial structures, uh, bifacial models, sorry, you will have the shades to the ground and the other structures. But because we have backtracking, there are no direct uh, beam shades, so there is no electrical shading loss. Um, right. So I think that's all the questions. Um, so if there are no other questions, um, it's uh, if you have any questions, it's now or never. I'm going to give you a minute. But I think otherwise um, we will finish here. But, okay, I think uh, there are no more questions, so we will finish now. Um, well, thank you so much for attending. Um, I hope you, uh, you enjoyed the webinar and that I was able to answer your questions. Um, like I said earlier, if you have more questions, if you, if you need more information, um, please um, write an email to support at ratepower.com and then our support team will be able to answer directly to you. So thank you again and see you in the next time.